Hey, what is up guys? I'm here to do a short video on, well, short and basic video on how to do SteamOS on your Windows PC of sorts. Um, it's fairly basic, I'm not going to get into the real depth of things, it's just literally how to install it and obviously see it working, basically. So the old system that I got in here is a 3770K, old HD 5870 I had laying around, and other parts that, yeah, just basically I had laying around just cheering, so I thought why not try and make some use out of it and sort of experiment with SteamOS. So yeah, let's go on to what we need. So the first things you want to do is head on to the top URL bar that I got there, which is the Steam powered site, uh, SteamOS build your own, there I just highlighted it for you. And you want to download the SteamOS beer install, it's about a 1 gig download. So um, yeah, um, once you got that downloaded, which I've already done just to save time and obviously not waste any more time, uh, you want to then unzip it into a, a FAT32 formatted USB disk. That's easily done in Windows, you can right click format, make sure it's FAT32, and then your USB should look something similar to that. If, if it looks similar to that, you've probably done done good. I've called it System Restore, just named it that because it's just my drive I have just laying about for that sort of stuff, basically. And yeah, we need to get on to the next bit, which is actually the system itself. First thing you want to do once you access your um, Steam machine, you want to get straight into the BIOS. This is the way you're going to install the, thing, um, the system, so press delete or whatever it is on your motherboard. We want to go down to the boot selection. In the boot selection, we want to make sure that Secure Boot is set to other OS. It will be set to Windows at the moment. This will stop the UEFI from launching, basically. It won't um, allow you to start the installation process. And then um, all the way down to the bottom, you want to find your memory stick. In this case, I've got my 30 gig stick, SanDisk Cruiser Fit stick. And I'll obviously then click on that and launch it. Alright, so next up, you get booted into the Steam icon, so a good start. You want to click that automated install button. This is going to be the simplest and easiest way of getting it to the install process. And it's going to do pretty much everything for you. It's scanning whatever CD-ROM drives you've got. Or obviously I think in this case it's looking for the install components which are actually on your USB. They're not going to be on the CD, so that's sort of wrong. It's going to detect what hardware you've got, so it's going to find out what sort of um, uh, LAN, if you're on a LAN cable, what sort of uh, driver it needs for that. It's then going to partition the disks of what what you've got there. In this case, I unplugged every single other hard drive I had in the system, just the one I wanted to install on. So it just had that to choose from and that's it. I didn't want anything else getting deleted. This is probably the easiest approach for anyone that wants to do this. They want to probably unplug everything and just let it install onto that drive do what it does unless you're really familiar with Linux that's really what I suggest for this because um, I tried looking at advanced stuff and I wasn't entirely guessing it you probably can find out quite easily but um, for anyone out there that doesn't really want to waste time and just wants a simple boot and it runs fine don't get me wrong now it runs fine but just let it do its job so basically this is going to be left for a little while, just the bars going across, installing this, installing that. Um, yeah, literally you can leave this alone for a little while. It's not going to take that long because the system itself isn't very big. So it's going to probably, I don't know, on a slow computer maybe it's going to take you 10 minutes. But like this thing was done about 4 or 5 minutes. Um, you will then hit a screen that asks about part cloning. Well, it won't ask. It will start doing. It will re basically restart itself. It, like I say, leave it what it's doing, and it will restart and gets this part clone bit. And once it's done with the part clone bit, you will then have to manually tell it to reboot. And once you reboot, it goes back into the system again, sort of thing. So another part I missed out from that. Is also that screen right there which is asking if you want the recovery or just the normal Linux basically always if that ever comes up just select the first one and it should pres resume back to where it start went again just you know it reboots and it will maybe ask you that from time to time when it's doing the system changes that's all it is so good news you managed to get so far and it's now hit the desktop that's all very good and well um, you will need to leave it to download the next bit which is it will download all the Steam Pro um, components if you are connected to the internet that is if not you may have a bit of an issue there 
but this is um, obviously the desktop you'd go back to if you didn't want to be in the, the Steam part of it. And yeah, you just let that download. It It's going to most likely restart again because what it will do once it's all done and up and running, it will always launch into Steam's big picture. If you ever tried that on your normal computer, that's what it uses when it first starts up. Very nice, very simple sort of console-like, I guess, uh, layout basically. And yeah, once that's all done, configured and set up so it starts up, that's it really. So yeah, it just ran, it's just run itself through a load of its code like setup commands I presume. I'm, I don't really know myself, I'm not a big Linux guy. And this is the bit I was talking about, we've now hit Park Clone, which is the one that I said you got to pay attention and make sure to click the reboot button while it's done. It takes a little while to do this. Um, it's apparently did in 28 seconds and then we forget the other options at this point you just want to do the reboot option you do not need to do anything else it's already done its job at that point this way it will then reboot like it says you get a nice steam icon and now you should boot into well once it's done this bit which is preparing everything ready to go which it sort of already was but this is in the in the actual Steam OS bit itself, I guess. But yeah, once it's done this, you should boot, boot into just the big picture. Sorry if I started you with that, but yeah, that's the sound of success. We're now into Steam. We have to go through all the user license agreement stuff, normal display stuff like any console for that matter would have um, but at the time of recording it I had to go in and actually go back into Linux and mess around with display settings a bit because it was over scaling or under scaling sorry whichever one anyhow you may not have that issue I did obviously then just general settings from here on out and then obviously sign into your account and this is the layout of what you get when you come, like obviously get yourself all signed in. You have your library as always, you can look for every game you've got on Steam. Bear in mind you won't be able to play some of these games because they aren't available for Linux. But also you can stream. If you've got another, cons uh, another PC like I've got, I can stream my CSGO and yeah, it will launch it. It seemed reasonably good, even with like a budget r router you know, nothing fancy going on, just a normal router that I got given from um, our broadband provider. I will want to upgrade it at some point, but never mind that. And yeah, all it does is it literally, everything I'm seeing on the screen right now is actually on the PC that I've got running elsewhere. And you're just literally putting it through the computer, to through the network, sorry. And yeah, you're just playing it. Um, as for latency and stuff, it seemed pretty good. I mean, you may find it's a bit too sensitive when it comes to games like CSGO where there is that reaction time you need. But, yeah, I, I was really surprised considering this thing's not really out out to such how it, how it did. So, yeah, I'm, I'm impressed. But anyway, I'll leave you with some footage of some CSGO and some Dota 2 just on the settings they had. I also got... um. Net graph open on um, Dota 2 just to show you what sort of frames per second it was doing. Because um, I ran that actually on the, the PC, I didn't stream it, that one. So, yeah, I'll leave you with that. And any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Give me some likes if you could, please. And yeah, if you feel like I missed something, let me know and I'll try and obviously establish that in a, another video or to you if you just need something specific. That's not a problem. Alright, thank you very much guys, catch you again.